Hey all you cool cats and kittens, it's Carol at Big Cat Rescue and I have been hunkered down at my desk because we made a new hire today and I was trying to get everything ready for that but I just came outside to see if there's anything still going on and there's like trenches all over the place <laughs> where we are putting in internet. Randall has been, oh dear, looks like we had a water leak here too. Um, Randall has been trying to install internet access points all around the sanctuary so that we can go live with you guys and give you a much better quality image by just going hopping from one hotspot to another. And it'll also save on our data plan, which would be lovely. So it's a lot of work because he's got to cover 67 acres in trenches to get that up and running. Well, you guys have been busy. <laughs> getting close. We're getting close. <laughs> Did you get my email about needing two of those backs updated? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I didn't well, I just sent it today. You've been out here the whole time. Uh, but since you're here, you know the upgrade that you did to my computer? Yes. If you could take the two nicest ones upstairs and do the same thing to that. From Tigerville? Okay. Thank you. Ooh, Devin's feeding a cat. That'll be fun. Are you guys eating? Are you eating your dinner? I thought I might have missed it all. Nope, still going. Still going. Tonight is the coordinator meeting, so I thought everybody was probably going to be already done by the time I got out here. This is exciting. Yes. You guys are with people's really want to see. Big cat, Devin. He's right. Uh, let's not line up at the drawers, guys. You're not leaving yet. <laughs> yeah, you gotta eat some more food before you go out. It's like you can't go out and play until you eat your dinner. He's right. Look at oh, 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 you're getting slobber all over him. You're so slobbery, Arthur. All shouting out to you, Devin. Oh. Sending you lots of <laughs> likes and hearts. Such a face. hiccup you're doing. Is it all too fast? I 
I think mostly what he's getting them to eat right now is ground beef, and that looks like a and chunk of beef. They are getting an extended vacation. They have done so much damage to their pools and their cages need repainting that they're probably going to be on vacation for another week or two. <laughs> Gonna be a long stick to reach your face. Reach your silly tiger face. We have about 14 coordinators, and the coordinators are all coming tonight to talk. They do that every few months to make sure that they're all um, on the same page and dealing with issues across the board, because there's just so many volunteers. There's like 130 volunteers, so it requires a lot of coordinators to coordinate all that effort. There will be snack and booze, so that's good. Have you tried Zeus yet tonight? I have not. He's Open not fed Zeus one. yet, so I don't know how he's doing yet today. I don't remember how much they said he ate this morning. I know Jamie and Catherine both went through the charts of the past several weeks on all of the cats to figure out what they're eating, when they're eating it, try to work out some kind of a plan. Got an itchy ear? No, that's first in that ear. Yeah, they're locked in this area because if he opens the gate, they're just going to wander off and not let him eat at all. So at least if they're in this small area, he can stick the food right up under their noses. Like that. Somebody said something about attracting flies with honey. <laughs> That's one way to pack it down. <laughs> it works. <laughs> I see you sidling up to that bowl food, full of food. too heavy so she doesn't need to be eating more in the evening she eats all of her meal at one time in the morning I wish these guys would too they just don't we had a discussion today about the weight of the cats so a lot of these cats are overweight not these guys but Zeus is really overweight 
and yet you can see the bones down their back. So once they get to be in their mid to late teenage years, they lose all that muscle mass. So you can see all the bones, you can see their hip bones, but then they have these big old bellies. I don't know what kind of bird that was. Andra oh shoot, don't spray me! <laughs> Got you. It would have. Good thing he's a little slow on the draw. <laughs> oh, good thing I can still hop up. Yeah, that's impressive. Good job. <laughs> Your brother's going to help you. Silly tigers. Silly tigers. Yeah, sanctuary weight is a whole lot bigger than in the wild weight. I'm always amazed at cats in the wild, how lean they are. They don't look anything like cats in cages. We had an interesting call of him in this morning. I don't know if Luana's had a chance to post the images, but a fellow, I think she got copied on him, a fellow contacted me this morning and said he's a wildlife photographer. He lives down in South Florida and he had caught images of a big male bobcat living in his neighborhood, which he loved because he loves wildlife. And on the camera a few days ago, the cat came by with a drain pipe stuck on its head and so around its neck. So apparently the cat stuck his neck into something and then couldn't get it off. And so the guy set a fish out last night to see if he could get the image again of the cat. The cat still got the thing on his neck. So he contacted us and we sent down traps and bait, uh, like day old dead chicks and stuff that the cat might be able to actually swallow with that thing around his neck. And Gail's actually hanging out down there because the last time he caught the cat about 8 p.m. So Gail's hanging out with nets and gloves and everything else, hoping to be able to retrieve the bobcat and bring him up here. There's not going to be any catching him because there's nothing wrong with his legs, so <laughs> we won't be able to just chase him down. But hopefully he will be hungry enough to go into the squeeze cage and we'll be able to catch him and get that thing off of his head or off of his neck. Now you can see they're out there in the vacation rotation enclosure. That's a two and a half acre vacation space. And usually the cats get a two-week vacation, but these guys are getting an extended vacation because we're working on their cages across the way here. They take those big balls in the pools and crash around in the pools until they bust out the concrete, so that has to be patched. And then the cages have to be painted from time to time so that they don't rust. We use a, a paint called rust and it's brown, so even though this right here doesn't look rusted, but it's the rust colored paint that we use. So that'll have to be scraped and painted to preserve it. While we're waiting for Devin to get the food together for Hoover and Seuss, I was at the North American Primate Sanctuary Alliance yesterday in Gatesville. They have their annual conference where all of the people who run primate sanctuaries from all over North America, so there were people from Canada there and all over North America, there was probably somewhere between 100 and 120 people present. They had asked me to give a presentation that I had given to the Big Cat Sanctuary Alliance um, back when Hurricane Irma hit us, so I had prepared a presentation to give in person at that event. And since we had to be here for Hurricane Irma and I couldn't leave, I recorded it, just sent the recording. So they played the recording at the Big Cat Sanctuary Alliance. And one of the people who's involved in both of those, Noelle Almrud from uh, Black Beauty Ranch, asked if I would come and give that presentation to Primate Sanctuary. So I was happy to do it. It's a, a talk on 21 different ways to raise money to fund the sanctuary. And you guys would be happy to know that you were the topic. and you educate other people and uh, you're always there for us when we have a voting contest or when we're trying to raise money like right now for Give Day and so I talk an awful lot about how amazing you guys are and I'm so appreciative that you guys are so amazing. Luana and I actually 
actually talked a little bit today. She's been coming up with all of these training protocols for people who are volunteering their time to be moderators in our group. And so she was saying, you know, it's going to be kind of like zoo college. And I said, well, you could actually create <laughs> exactly <laughs> like zoo college where people would join a course and they would go through all of the different classes on all the different things that we do. And then as they graduate each class, they would move on to the next class. So she's going to be looking at setting that up. And it'll be a free course. Um, we wouldn't be charging people to do that. I think it'd be very helpful for all of our moderators to have all of that information in a um, consistent type format. And then after I gave the presentation at the North American Primary Sanctuary Alliance yesterday, they asked if I would do an all-day seminar for them on all of the topics that I touched on. So it was like 21 topics touched on in a 20-minute talk. It would take all day or more than that to cover that. So I got to thinking, well, maybe I should do a zoocollege.com type thing for people who run sanctuaries. And again, that would be free. I'm not going to charge people who are already giving all their time and energy. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> awkward case. So that'll take some time to do, but um, I actually started working on it a little bit today. Hoover! I'm going to be quiet while Hoover eats so we don't distract him. Sounds like a wire shorting out, Devin. <laughs> what does? Your your chuff. <laughs> Got a couple more pieces, dude. Like three or four. 
four more pieces. That's it. That's it. Do you not want this? Just chicken thighs with all your feelings? Alright, well I got a volunteer committee meeting and then the coordinator meeting, so I have got to run, but thank you everybody for joining us.